Ladybugs are well-known and well-liked garden inhabitants, but they are more than just adorable. Take another look at these backyard bugs. Why do we call ladybugs ladies when there are both male and female versions? They are named after a particular lady, according to Merriam-Webster. The Virgin Mary The seven-spot ladybug is one of the most common European ladybugs, and its seven markings remind people of the Virgin Mary's seven sorrows. In Germany, these insects are known as Mary's beetles. Ladybugs are beetles, not bugs. Genuine bugs, which include common insects like bedbugs and cicadas, are classified as hemiptera. Ladybugs, on the other hand, are members of the beetle order Cleopatra. Many entomologists refer to these insects as lady beetles, or cochinellides. The ladybug is a bishop in some regions of England for unknown reasons. There are other local variations of this name, like the magnificent Bishy Bishy Barnaby. Most people in England now call these insects ladybugs, maybe because they can fly. The portly, spotted ladybug is popularly known as a little cow in various languages. A famous Russian name for the ladybug, for example, is Bozyakorovka, which translates to God's little cow. The French word vacadieu, which means cow of God, is sometimes used. The Brits used to call it a lady cow before switching to bishop and ladybug. You've certainly seen the red ladybug with black dots but ladybirds come in a variety of colors, from ashy gray to drab brown to metallic blue. Their patterns differ as well. Some have stripes, others have squiggles, and yet others have no pattern at all. The number of spots on the spotted ladybug varies. The black ladybird with two vivid red spots is twice stabbed. The yellow 22-spot ladybugs, on the other hand, have, well, 22 of them. And some ladybugs just prefer to complicate matters. The harlequin ladybug can be yellow, red, black, or practically any combination of these colors, and it can have 0 to 22 spots. To prevent being eaten, be toxic or just plain bad tasting, Several creatures create compounds that make them taste bad, and they warn predators by flashing bright colors, much like a stop sign or yellow caution tape. Striped skunks, for example, have a potent stinking spray with a black and white pattern that acts as a warning sign. Coral snakes are very poisonous and have bright red, black, and yellow stripes. Similarly, brightly colored ladybugs are walking billboards that advertise, don't eat me. I'm going to make you ill. Don't worry. Ladybugs won't harm you unless you consume a lot of them or unless you're allergic to them. Yet, many ladybugs secrete poisons that make them unappealing to birds and other potential predators. These toxic compounds are related to the color of a ladybugs. The brighter the ladybugs, the greater the poisons. Ladybug mothers deposit clusters of eggs on plants, but not all of those eggs hatch Several of them are missing embryos. They are a delicious present from the mother ladybug, and the freshly hatched larvae will devour them. When you think of baby ladybugs, you might see them as miniature versions of adult ladybugs. Isn't it adorable? Nevertheless, what develops from those ladybugs' eggs is a long, spinal larva that resembles an alligator. Ladybugs' larvae are not dangerous to humans. They creep around, eating and developing, until they are ready to transform into something more crazier. The next stage of a ladybug's life cycle is to locate a suitable site on some plant, settle down, and develop into an alien-looking pupa. The ladybug then undergoes an extraordinary change from larva to adult, breaking down old body components and developing new ones while being protected by a protective coating. As the adult is ready to emerge, it bursts through its old skin. Ladybugs do not appear to be particularly aerodynamic. Its skull-a-full domed backs are comprised of modified wings that act as tough armor. A ladybugs would go nowhere fast by flapping hair wings. So, how can these insects fly? When a ladybugs takes flight, it raises those protective coverings. Below are another set of narrow wings that are ideal for flight. 
usually folded for storage, they unfurl for takeoff. Adult ladybug are typically associated with warm summer days, yet they can be seen even in the winter months when it's cold. They enter a slumber and cuddle in clusters, frequently under logs or under plants. Harlequin ladybugs, for example, keep warm by infiltrating our houses. These insects gather in large numbers and nestle into dark corners of a home. They awaken and stumble around the room on very warm days. Luckily, these insects do not devour our food or chew on our furniture. They do, however, spray forth a nasty defense substance that can stain bright surfaces. They can also trigger allergic responses. Ladybugs are universally liked for a variety of reasons, one of which being the fact that they are an all-natural and cute method of insect control. They devour plant pests like aphids, scale bugs, and mealy bugs, and they have voracious appetites. In its lifetime, a single ladybug may consume 5,000 aphids. Many beetles, on the other hand, augment their meals with pollen and other plant nutrients. Some only consume plants and fungus. Orange ladybug, for example, feed on mildew. For some, garden plants are on the menu. The Mexican bean bug eats beans, whereas the squash beetle eats squash, cantaloupe, and pumpkin. Several ladybug species have been discovered in previously unexplored regions of the planet. They've spread in two ways. In some situations, individuals brought the insects over to control agricultural pests, while in others, the bugs hitched a ride on imported items. The outcomes haven't always been favorable. One invader, the harlequin ladybug, is native to East Asia but has expanded to portions of Europe and North America. It drives out native species, infects them with a lethal fungal infection, and even consumes them. Winemakers are dealing with a new and strange problem as a result of harlequin ladybugs, which is ladybugs taint. Several vineyards are located alongside fields of other crops, such as soybeans. The aphids that infest such crops are enthusiastically consumed by ladybugs, but after the crops are harvested, the insects require a new home. Some of them make their way to the vines and crawl about on the grapes. But then comes the grape harvest. When ladybugs are terrified, they spray forth a stinky defense fluid when they are mistakenly swept up with bunches of grapes. The resultant wine has a distinctive smelly taste, similar to peanuts or asparagus.